Tonight on Chronicle, alluring watercolors, precise pen and ink, and throw in a monster or two. The creative works of Seacoast artist Bill Carlberg. The stories are funny stories. They are emotional stories, memories of something, and it just, it's heartwarming. I wanted to be a scientist when I was a kid and in college and in graduate school, but my earliest memories are of making art. That's next on Chronicle. There are so many talented artists living in and around New Hampshire. Some use a brush, other pens and pencils. The image is varying as much as the media. And tonight we revisit a Seacoast native whose work crosses all mediums and genres, and he's sometimes even revered as a monster maker. Hmm. Jennifer Crompton spent some time with Bill Parlberg. You don't need an artist's eye to appreciate the rugged beauty of the Isles of Shoals, but it takes having one to create the kind of magic evoked in the works of Bill Parleberg. Some of this work I do plein air. I love to paint outside. The Seacoast artist spends a week a year as a steward on Smutty Nose Island, capturing those feelings. You go out there and it's, it's about the, the breeze and the sky and the sun and the birds. A display of some of his watercolors hanging in Portsmouth's Kennedy Gallery. In fact, that's the Haley House. That's where you That stay. is the Haley House. That is right on Smiley Nose. And um, as is this, and this, and this. They're just part of his Smutty Nose watercolors and drawings of 80s Portsmouth exhibit as the Kennedy Gallery's featured artist of August 2018. There's pencil drawings as well as his pen and inks. Those are all the originals that are up on that panel. The 80s work documents iconic places frozen in time. The original Gillies food wagon, the steeple in Market Square, the bread box and beverage barn on Islington. Every detail from the power lines to the prices, precise. It looked somehow both gaudy and interesting and characteristic of something the times or the neighborhood or the town and that's what caught my eye. He's funny, he's quirky, um, I really enjoy working with him. He calls some of his stuff cheesy. Gallery owner Wendy Clement says it's the kind of cheese that gets people talking. The stories are funny stories, they are emotional stories, memories of something and it just, it's heartwarming. But it's Parlberg's monstrous reimagining of those icons that draws the biggest immediate reaction. Oh, they just start laughing. And they call their friends over and they're like, did you see this? Did you see this? The first, King Kong, climbing the steeple of the North Church. A quick drawing he put on the cover of a local magazine he ran in the 80s. It wasn't a grand plan or anything. It was just um, for fun. And every, people loved it. And um, so then I did one of the tugboats, a, a giant squid with the tugboats, and then a lobster with the Wentworth. A challenge when you're allergic to shellfish. I bought a lobster, dead one, cooked one, and posed it. And I drew it, I sketched it for several days. It started to smell. Then came Godzilla, or a monster that looks just like it, attacking the Memorial Bridge. And that was the first one I planned ahead, and I thought, okay, this is gonna be a big change. I'm gonna do this on purpose because it um, has to do with a big change in town. 3D glasses and 3D. included, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. It takes a little work, but it looks cool, and it's also kind of cheesy. So again, yeah. it's, it is... It's totally cheesy. <laughs> it's, it's kind of cheesy and kind of humorous, and even without the glasses, it, the way the, the, the blue and the red is off, um, it looks like old-fashioned out-of-register printing, you know, back in the day when yeah. printing was really bad. As for the meaning behind his latest, an alien ship over Market Square? For anybody who's been in town more than 10 or 20 years, that's pretty obvious. That the people in town have changed, 
The town has changed. It happened, you know, it's, it's not news. The Hampton native works out of a shed he converted into a studio behind his Kittery Point home, full of watercolors, pens, pencils, and inspiration. I spent years trying to make things look like a tree or the sky or the church steeple. And then after I sort of had that down, then I, I, I wanted to work on the composition, about the arrangement of things on shapes on the paper. And, and now I'm, I'm starting to work on feelings. I want to make you feel like you could go in that gate and walk around there and go in the door. So I want to make you look at the front door. So it's the lightest and the darkest. Uh, the most contrast is there. His own path, a winding one. I wanted to be a scientist when I was a kid and in college and in graduate school, but my earliest memories are of making art. It was while he was in grad school studying psychology that he first delved into pen and ink and sold some on the side. I did drawings of frat houses and sorority houses at the <laughs> university I was at, and then I would sit there and make note cards and little prints, and I would sell them to the... Um, sorority sisters and the frat boys. His career has spanned commercial work and marketing, all the while expanding his own artistic horizons, recently involving the behavior of seagulls. Instead of just drawing the bird sitting there, I want to draw the bird doing something that gives me feelings so that maybe when somebody looks at my painting or drawing, they'll get feelings as well. Building a body of work as multidimensional as the artist himself. I never thought of an alien, so this is interesting. So who knows? Who knows what's in Bill's mind? <laughs> I've done six different monsters, uh, and I have a couple more in the works. I would like to do a monster that is somehow dealing with these big new buildings. You know the big new buildings in town? 